we next move on to a very very important concept that has been implemented by industries across the globe and this concept has been responsible for improving current processes product or service qualities and consumer acceptance this concept is called as the six sigma concept and it was pioneered by motorola general electric ge and honeywell companies the six sigma concept was trademarked by motorola in 1993 any process that follows the six sigma concept is expected to be defect free 99.99966 percentage of the time which means in 1 million products 3.4 up to 3.4 may be defective six sigma consists of quality control techniques and tools to improve the current processes product or services it seeks to improve the quality of the output of a process by identifying and removing the causes of defect and minimizing variability in manufacturing and business process thus six sigma is defined as a disciplined business methodology to increase customer satisfaction as well as profitability by streamlining operations improving quality and eliminating defects six sigma creates an environment of continuous process and improvement enabling businesses to provide better products and better services to the customers what are the objectives of six sigma the objectives of six sigma are explained very simply as to bring about a reduction in the cycle time or processing time to eliminate or reduce errors to improve quality to eliminate defects and finally improve customer satisfaction okay now let us look at how to achieve these objectives the goal in any six sigma is to identify and eliminate defects that are causing variations in quality by defining a sequence of steps around a certain target okay now we will look at the different method, two different methodologies that are used within six sigma to eliminate these defects methodology 1 is called as dmaic methodology where d m a i n c stand for different aspects of six sigma which we will see at, look at okay so d stands for define so in this methodology the first step is to define the problem and the goals of the project the second step is to measure in detail the various aspects of the current process here the performance of the current process is measured by establishing a data collection plan which will determine the defects and gather information the third step is to analyze the process or analyze the data to find the root cause of defects therefore the process is analyzed and the root cause of variation and defect is established and if there are any issues with the current strategy that is identified the fourth step is improving the process by eliminating the above root, uh, determined root causes of defects using innovative solutions and finally the last part of the dmaic methodology states that the process should be controlled so control of how the process is done in the future and avoid old habits and to ensure that the whole process stays on track 
the second methodology that can be used to implement the six sigma concept is called as the dma dv concept and includes five phases this methodology is used typically to create new processes and new products or services d stands for define the project goals and these goals should be realistic and suit the customer requirements or the business strategy m stands for measure critical components of the process and the product capabilities here the customers requirements should be considered and translated into project goals a stands for analysis of data and developing designs for the process and eventually picking the best one here the multiple options that are available and the alternatives must be presented to the customer and based on the customer requirements the best process should be adopted d stands for design and test the details of the process here the process should be designed at a high level and it should become a prototype for identification of errors and making modifications v stands for verify the design by running simulations and a pilot program and finally the process is then handed over to the customer dma dv is used when a business needs to develop a product or a process that does not exist or when a product has been optim optimized but still sh falls short of the quality requirements you have come across this terminology ous earlier let us now try to understand what is ous when the test results fall outside the specifications or the established or the acceptance criteria established in the drug application or the drug master file or the official compendia or the manufacturer then such results are said to be ous the term also applies to all in process laboratory tests that are outside the established specifications the purpose of an ous is to investigate and determine the cause of the ous result the source of the ous result must be identified either as a laboratory error or as a error in the manufacturing process generally ous is observed and investigated during stability studies finished product evaluation in process testing raw material testing and packaging materials testing once an ous test result has been reported it is necessary to not only identify the test result and also it is also necessary to assess the test result so in this case phase 1 or investigation in the laboratory needs to be carried out now what does this mean the fda mandates that an investigation must be conducted whenever an ous result is obtained the purpose behind this investigation is to determine the cause of this result what has led to this uh, failing of the test is it the the source should be identified is it an error of the testing process or an error in the manufacturing process okay so based on the investigation and retesting even if the batch is rejected still an investigation is necessary you cannot simply reject the batch and close the matter the matter needs to be investigated and should be understood whether such a result is obtained only with that particular product with that particular api or with other products as well thus rejection of the batch does not negate the need to perform the investigation such an investigation should be thorough timely unbiased well documented and scientifically sound the first phase of such an investigation should involve initial assessment of the accuracy of the laboratory data so whatever data has been generated during testing whether the data is accurate 
where possible <clears throat> this should be done immediately this way hypothesis regarding laboratory error or instrument malfunction should first be confirmed if there is no error during the testing or instrumental error then a full scale oos investigation should be carried out whether the testing laboratory belongs to the manufacturing company or the contract laboratory has carried out the testing full fledged oos is necessary during the full fledged laboratory investigation the first activity that is carried out is to understand whether the analyst has performed the duty perfectly so the first responsibility for achieving accurate laboratory testing results lie with the analyst so we have to first understand whether the error is a person error we need to understand and see whether the analyst who has performed the uh, test has done it accurately the analyst should be aware of the potential problems that could occur during the testing and should be very careful and watch for problems that could create inaccurate results leading to oos test results in accordance with the cgmp regulations the analyst should ensure that only those instruments which meet established performance specifications are used and all the instruments that he is using are properly calibrated this is the importance of maintaining instruments and equipments maintenance calibration validation okay so the the analyst should be aware of the problems that may arise if an uncalibrated uh, instrument is used or an un unvalidated process is used for the testing certain analytical methods have system suitability requirements and if the uh, the systems do not meet the suitability requirements then the, this instrument should not be used reference standard solutions should be injected at intervals through chromatographic runs to understand the drift noise repeatability etc this is one of the examples of suitability requirements if during this standard runs or injection of reference standards it is found that the system is not functioning properly then all the testing that is done by that instrument in that period should be discarded obvious errors such as spilling of the sample solution or incomplete transfer of the sample must be reported by the analyst and he should not consider those results analysis should not knowingly continue an analysis that may be invalidated at a later time for se several reasons okay thus it is very important to understand that the analyst plays an important role in generating accurate results and therefore the analyst must be suitably trained and work in accordance with the cgmp requirements next is the responsibility of the laboratory supervisor the analyst works under the guidance of the laboratory supervisor what is the duty of such a laboratory supervisor once an oos result has been identified the supervisor's assessment should be objective and timely there should be no preconceived assumptions the supervisor should carry out a detailed investigation without bias data should be assessed promptly to ascertain if the results are due to laboratory error or whether the results indicate problems in the manufacturing process how can this be done an immediate assessment should be carried out and this includes reexamination of the test solutions test units and glassware used in the original measurements and preparations which can give a better understanding of whether there has been laboratory error or not the supervisor should discuss the test method again with the analyst confirm whether the analyst knows how to perform the procedure correctly the supervisor should examine the raw data that is obtained in the analysis and that includes chromatograms spectra and calculations he should verify whether the calculations uh, are scientifically sound 
appropriate and correct. He should check if unauthorized or unvalidated changes have been made in the records. The supervisor should confirm whether the instruments were performing properly. He should try to detect if appropriate reference standards, solvents, freshly prepared reagents and other solutions were used and whether they are meeting the specifications. Once it has been proven that there is no laboratory error, then the next step is to carry out a full-fledged OOS investigation. So this is what we will discuss here as phase 2 full-scale investigation of the OOS. When an initial investigation does not determine that laboratory error caused the OOS result and it is found that whatever results are obtained are accurate, a full-scale OOS investigation using a predetermined procedure should be conducted. Why? To identify the root cause of the OOS. Okay. And appropriate corrective action and preventive action should be taken. What will this involve? A full scale investigation includes a review of production and sampling procedures and additional laboratory testing. Among the elements of this phase is evaluation of the impact of OOS results on already distributed batches. Now remember that some of the batches of this product have already reached the market. So what exactly is the uh, influence of this OOS on those batches? What is the impact? Do those batch, are those batches passing? Are those batches failing? Do they need to be recalled? Is there a caution necessary to be given? Okay, so this is what will be activity will be carried out in phase two or in the full scale OS investigation of the OS test results. Now, now we know that the testing methodology and analyst have not there is no error related to these. Therefore, the next step is to carry out a review of the production or the process manufacturing process. Such an investigation should involve all other departments that may have contributed to the OOS. That is manufacturing department, process development or the R&D, maintenance department and engineering department. Also, all sites potentially involved should be included in the investigation. Or the other potential problems also should be identified and investigated simultaneously. The records and documentation of the manufacturing process should be fully reviewed to determine the posi possible cause of the OOS res uh, results. A full-scale OOS investigation should consist of a timely, thorough and well-documented review. And a written record of the review should be in should include the following information. The full scale investigation should include the following information. A clear statement why the investigation is being carried out. A summary of the aspects of the manufacturing process that may have possibly caused this problem. The results of review of the documentation with assignment of the actual cause or the probable cause and the results of a review made to determine if the problem has also occurred in the previous batches and finally what corrective actions need to be taken or will be taken or have already been taken will be re recorded. Thus a full scale investigation of the OOS will involve investigation into the production process. And finally, once the investigation is carried out, record of the review or investigation should be made. In, and this includes the reason why investigation was carried out, summary of the probable causes of the manufacture of the OS in the manufacturing process, the results of the review and description of the corrective action that has been taken or needs to be taken. 
also necessary is to carry out additional laboratory testing where needed a full scale os investigation may include additional laboratory testing other than the testing that has been carried out in phase 1 and this includes retesting of the original sample and if necessary resampling and retesting the sample that was uh, that is to be used for retesting must be taken from the same material from the original lot tested again in case of resampling it involves analyzing the sample that is from additional units that were collected from the original batch okay thus where necessary additional laboratory testing is to be done on the same sample or on a fresh sample from the original batch <clears throat> as i told you uh, additional laboratory sampling involves retesting or resampling in case of retesting the sample for the retesting should be taken from the same homogeneous material that was collected originally from the lot it should be tested again for a liquid which is a homogeneous bulk the sample may be taken from the original unit liquid product that is from the bottle or from the bulk for a solid it may be an additional weighing from the same sample composite also investigating test instruments malfunctions or identification of a possible sample handling problem should be investigated okay so it is not only retesting and uh, uh, retesting but also understanding whether the instrument is performing properly or if the sampling is done improperly all these should be taken into consideration resampling involves analyzing a specimen from any additional units that are collected as a part of the original sampling procedure or from a new sample collected from the batch so the same sample may be analyzed or if there are multiple samples available fresh samples may be resampled and this this resampling should be performed by the same qualified validated methods that have been used for the original sample after carrying out the resampling and uh, testing or uh, retesting the results so obtained should be reported care should be taken to see that the calcul correct calculations have been done where necessary averaging is done at the same time now that there are multiple results available it is necessary to analyze all the results and compare them with each other to understand the trend of the results and to see what is the variation in the results and whether the variation in these results has any statistical significance Finally conclusion should be drawn out of the entire exercise the results should be evaluated the batch quality should be determined and whether the batch is good whether the batches should be released such a decision should be made by the quality unit relevant sops should be laid down and followed in arriving at such a conclusion all records pertaining to the os test result then the investigation and the calculations should be maintained and retained regulations require that a report should be submitted within 3 working days and such a report is called as a field alert report so field alert report should be submitted within 3 days working days and such a report should contain information concerning failure of a distributed batch which has failed to meet the specific any of the specifications established in the application to summarize whenever an oos test result is encountered a report has to be first prepared and submitted based on the report the results should be investigated to understand if it is an analytical error or a manufacturing uh, manufacturing problem such as after such an investigation by the technical team detailed investigation or detailed full scale os if necessary must be conducted based on the results obtained conclusion must be drawn and the data and the conclusions should be reported and finally 
the conclusion and the test data reaches the quality department or the quality manager who then evaluates and tries to understand the reason for the OS and whether the batch can be released or whether the batch cannot be released and what is the fate of the batches that have already reached the market and what corrective actions need to be taken. Thus, OOS or out of specification test results hold great significance in contributing to the maintenance of the high quality of the product as well as meeting the customer needs and, uh, uh, and the expectations.